Hey everyone, Luke here with the Knee Replacement Therapist. In this episode of the Knee to Know Show, we're going to talk about when is it appropriate to transition from a walker to a cane after knee replacement surgery. Before I jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in all things related to knee replacement surgery, preparation, rehab, recovery, and much, much more. So when it comes to transitioning walker to cane, obviously you're going from a greater assistive device, so a device that's providing more assistance, more weight bearing, more offloading of that knee to less assistance with balance, less assistance with offloading the knee. Um, a lot of people, or some people, don't necessarily use a walker after surgery. They might go straight to the cane, or they might not have any device after surgery. Um, this depends on all sorts of things, um, your pain level, your function, your mobility, your age, um, a lot of different factors play a part in terms of, you know, are you starting out with a walker after surgery, which is what a lot of people do, at least briefly, um, or a cane, or maybe no device at all. But what are some of the criteria that we have for transitioning from a walker to a cane? Now, there's no set criteria that, you know, physical therapists or surgeons or doctors use, but this is some of the criteria that I, I personally use with my patients. So one, we want to talk about pain. Is pain impacting your walking to the extent that are you walking with a limp um, or what we refer to as an intelligent gait? So an intelligent gait is basically walking in a pattern that pain impacts how you walk. So you're limping or you change how you're walking because of pain or to avoid pain. So are those things occurring? Is your pain at a level when you're standing, when you're walking that it is affecting your walking pattern. You know, are you taking shorter steps? Are you limping? Are you hiking your hip up? Um, are you trying to swing the leg around? All sorts of different things. But if it's still a significant impact on your walking, then that might be a barrier to transitioning to a cane because you're still going to need that walker to offload the pressure and the forces going through that knee. And then in that same token, we want to look at, you know, are you getting close to, you don't have to be perfect, but closer to what we call a normal walking pattern. And of course, there's probably different viewpoints about what's normal or what's a good, you know, close enough to normal to transition. But you want to think about the main thing. So are you walking with a heel to toe pattern? And what that means is when you, um, your foot comes down, the heel is the first thing that steps down and then you kind of rock over your foot and then the toe pushes off as the last thing that comes when your toe or when your foot lifts off the ground. So a heel to toe pattern. Are you taking good full steps? So a good full step um, length, how big your steps are is close to normal, if not in a normal length. Are you walking at a regular, relatively regular speed or are you, you know, really have a slow walking speed still? These are all things that we're considering. Again, there's no one size fit all. There's no set criteria for this. Also, are you using your walker? Are you really dependent on your walker? And what I mean by this is, are you leaning really heavily, putting a lot of weight through your arms and through the walker to offload and decrease the force through the knee? Or are you just kind of using the walker? You know, you have it there, you have your hands on it, but you're still able to stand up relatively tall uh, you're using it more for balance as a, an, you know, a balance aid rather than something to put your body weight through, put your force through to offload the knee. And you, are you walking with a step over step pattern? So again, our step length, how big our steps are, tends to decrease after surgery. And we want to take what's a step over step pattern is basically when you take a step, your foot is going in front of the other leg, the other foot. So instead of going equal with it, it's going past it. So you're taking big steps that are going past the other foot with every step. Another thing we look at is just your general balance. So your ability to maintain balance on the one leg, both your surgical leg and the non-surgical leg. So a target that I see out there sometimes is 10 seconds. Again, this isn't set in stone, but if you're able to maintain your balance on one leg, for 10 seconds, that's a pretty good indicator that you're comfortable to transition to the cane. Now again, none of this is set in stone. A lot of times what I'll do with my patients and my uh, clients is I'll really do a lot of practice walking with the cane when you're in your therapy sessions. 
um, so that you can get comfortable with it. You have someone there supervising you, giving you some feedback, um, guarding you if you feel a little unsteady or uncomfortable. Um, and start with the cane in therapy or start with doing short distances, maybe just in the house or just, you know, up down, you know, the sidewalk a few, up, you know, a few hundred feet or not even that far, probably, you know, a hundred feet and back and, you know, build up and build into it slowly. You know, usually I don't transition someone from walker to cane, you know, just a, you know, a clean split. Usually it's, you know, use the walker still, but every now and then use the cane, use it a little bit in therapy, use it a little bit in the house, and then just start using it more and more and more till you're using the cane exclusively and are no longer using the walker. I hope you found this video insightful and helpful. Please be sure to leave your comments, your questions, your suggestions, whatever you have to share below in the comments section. Please hit that like button to help spread this video to other viewers if you found it helpful and insightful. And I thank you very much for watching.